That might fix it. Okay, let's try that. Let me listen to it. Okay, can anyone hear me now? <laughs> Is there any sound? Is that, yep, you can hear me? Oh, at last. <laughs> Hello everyone, do you know what? I was sitting here chatting away to myself. <laughs> and everyone's going, Is my iPad on mute? <laughs> Oh, you lovely, lovely lot. Well, what can I say? Obviously, I don't actually need to be on your screen for you not to have a party because I was watching all of the comments, although the tech wasn't working. So you couldn't see me, but I could see all the comments and everything else. And you was all just, you know, hello, hello. And I was like, well, they don't even need me. <laughs> they chatted already. <laughs> How is everybody? Hope you're all having a lovely Saturday afternoon or or is it? Yeah, it's lunchtime. For the US, it's lunchtime. For us in the UK, it's just past five o'clock. So I've been chilling all day on the sofa and we had uh, Wimbledon on. So it's the ladies finals today. So I sat down and enjoyed that match just before I thought I'd come and come and join you guys and have a little chat. So welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming. Um, the reason for the technical difficulties, just to enlighten you, was that I was trying to stream for YouTube and Twitch. And for some bizarre reason, the minute we clicked the go live button at like two minutes past, it wouldn't work because it, it didn't like the idea of me multi-streaming. So all you guys on YouTube got me. So hopefully Lauren's gone on to the Twitch one and is telling anyone over there that it's not going to go on to Twitch. It's only coming on YouTube. So... Oh, so can everyone hear me now? So looking good. How was your surgery? Oh, yeah, there's a story for you people. <laughs> what can I say? Apart from I'm already going stir crazy. I've been at home. I had the surgery Monday. Where are we now? Saturday. And I'm already going stir crazy because I'm like, oh, this is boring now. Just not being able to get around unassisted without two crutches. And, you know, I'm even having to resort to wearing a backpack just so that I can put things in the backpack and get myself around. So yeah, it's, I'm not enjoying myself right now. So I was feeling all rather miserable and all rather bored. So I was like, you know what? What better time to reach out to my stitching buddies and see whether they wanna, you know, give, give me someone to talk to. I know I can't hear you, but I can read you. <laughs> Literally read you. So I'm just sitting here having a little look at all you lovely, lovely people. Um. Wow, there's quite a lot of you, isn't there? <laughs> so, just ever so quickly before I show you any of the stitching, and we do a little bit of stitching, because, you know, that was my plan, was that I would stitch and chat at the same time. You know how well that goes. <laughs> um, but update was, went in for surgery with an unknown what I was going to have. Came round the other side with a... Um, a hip that has now been micro fractured because it's got two big cartilage lesions on the top of the femoral head um, and I had a tear as well but the consultant basically turned around and said I've micro fractured it for now but in all honesty he said I don't think it's going to give you any relief whatsoever he said because I really didn't anticipate that that's what we'd find and because of that the likelihoods are he will be pulling me back in for a hip replacement in about a year because he said I have to wait six months for this to heal and then I have to wait another six months to see whether this does give me any relief whatsoever as a temporary stopgap and if it doesn't then they're just gonna change the hip and give me a ceramic one so so there we go so you know when you go in thinking this was the fix and when you sort of say to him so do you think it's fixed it and he went in all honesty he said no I don't think so he said I don't think you're going to notice anything different he said but we thought seems as we was there we'd give it a go and try anyway so so yeah so that's the update with the hip so needless to say me and my trusty crutches of which is giving me blisters on my hands and I've, I've already got like a callus on this hand um, because they're horrible and at the moment he's basically said 
I'm only allowed to put as much weight through my foot as as you could before you actually crush a grape. So that's basically almost zero, I think. <laughs> so I'm like that for six weeks. So, but I am off work for some time now. So with the whole fact of being off work and being stuck at home and not even being able to get around, which, yeah, I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Um, yeah, I can see me reaching out to this community just a little bit more because otherwise I think I will go bonkers. Totally, totally bonkers. <laughs> oh dear. So let's have a little look. Who have we got in the chat? Who is on on the stream today? There looks like there's a load of you. 169 of you. Wow. Okay, now you're just making me all a bit nervous now because you're all just sitting there watching. <laughs> So what's this? I need to learn how to do Zoom or Web WebEx. Not sure how many people could participate. Mm, it's a good, yeah. At least that way I can actually talk to people rather than me just rambling at the screen as usual. <laughs> oh. So I'm on crutches for, well, almost non-weight bearing for six weeks. Um, and then I think it's another four to six weeks to get off the crutches where you have to sort of like phase it down to 75%, 50%, 25% and then, then I should be good to go on, on me dodgy hip still. See, that's the bit that makes it even more laughable. I've put myself all through this pain and all of this inability to move around only to realise that there's no gain out of it. It's not like it's going to fix me. <laughs> But hey, it is what it is. And, uh, and at the end of the day, I would hate for the consultant to have just gone in, took the hip out and give me a hip replacement when I didn't actually need one. Um, so yeah, but it just goes to show you that all the MRIs in the world and the x-rays in the world don't always show everything. So that was what he said. Because he said like, I had no idea. He said none of the scans showed that much damage. Hence the reason why he went in with his conservative measure. So Oh, but there we go. I'm um, all good other than that, apart from bored. Totally, totally bored, people. <coughs> so how is everybody, now that I've given you a quick update on me? What have we all been doing on this lovely Saturday, of which I'm looking out the window. I would say it's a lovely Saturday here, but here in the UK, it's just um, nothing but rain. Rain and drizzle. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now I'm going to start coughing. I hope all went with surgery. Just grouping in the corner, ripping out three. Oh, so someone's already ripping out 300 stitches that they did wrong. Oh, poor love. I'm hoping that there's going to be no ripping out of any stitches on this on this stream. It's 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 nothing but stitching. So, since as you're here to see the stitching, and we've all had a quick chat, and I've let you know all the juicy details of what you needed to know. Let me fling you on over so you can see what my plan is for today, shall we? Okay, so the plan for today, <coughs> if I can stop coughing, is to work on the lovely Mirabilia. I say lovely loosely because she's she's been a bit of a pet hate recently. Um, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> Cyberwolf, would you like a cup of tea or coffee? Do you know what? I've got some juice and I really should behave myself with my juice. So let me just ungraciously have some juice. And I can't even say that it's my drugs that are making me cough because I haven't taken any today. So that, that way I know how much it hurts and how much it doesn't hurt. Let's have a look. Um... Oh, so we've got someone doing a bit of back stitch on their daughter's stocking. Oh, at least we know it's been raining in Sydney today. Wow, it's a bit late for Sydney, isn't it? What time is it there? It must be really late. Montreal temperature is 26, oh, 26 degrees sunny. But stitching is the plan for now. Also watching 2020 Euro Championship today. England is playing. Fabulous. Well, it's good to hear that you're all, you know, hanging out, doing all the things. 
Nanette says, it's my birthday, so I have a new start. Halloween at Hot Ground. Oh, I've seen that one. Oh, and happy birthday, Nanette. Oh, say happy birthday, Nanette. It's always good to have a birthday. And the fact that you're having a birthday new start. Wow, that's exciting. Now I want it to be my birthday. <laughs> Just so I can have a new start. And I have look. I have to. I have to confess. You know how I don't really, I don't really tend to do very much of the uh, of the Halloween stitching. But I have seen that one quite a lot on Floss Tube just recently. Because, needless to say, bored Teresa has been like Floss Tube crazy this last week. Um, yay! That's what I like to see. Look, look, Minette, All the happy birthdays in the chat. Wonderful. I have to be honest, I have looked at that chart and I, even I was like, ooh, ooh, I wonder whether I'd actually like stitching on that one. So watch this space. Nanette, you'll have to send me pictures of how it's coming along and how quickly it stitches. If it's a quick stitch <laughs> or quickish, then I might be interested. But if it loads and loads of colour changes, then I'm just going to get bored of it because, yeah, I need a bit more blocky coloured stuff at the moment. So what else have we got? Um... Working on Celeb Summer by Madame Chantilly. Good stuff. You should stitch your Halloween piece. I know I should stitch your Halloween piece. My arguing point was when I stitched my autumn, it did have a pumpkin on it, didn't it? With a witch's hat and it had a little bat in it. So that was my idea of Halloween. <laughs> it's pretty shocking. I know, I know. Okay, so... I came prepared today, people. This, this, well, this was the plan. Now, see, I'm getting confused where I need to be looking. I know I need to be looking here, but I'm reading your comments, which are over here. So if I look like I'm, I'm sort of going like this, it's, it's because I'm still trying to work out where I should be orientating myself. <laughs> but if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're supposed to be stitching with me, you shouldn't be looking at me. You should be looking down here at your stitching. <laughs> oh. okay so come prepared well at least I, I attempted to come prepared today so I've already outlined so the plan is that I'm going to try and stitch inside these lines and not go wrong and not have to count and can just focus on what you're all saying and do my stitching all at the same time so no challenge there right <laughs> because oh, I'm just so good at this multitasking I'm so good at it I've even messed up my own needle already there are a number of lovely hollow charts Christmas house of I don't do Halloween yes Nanette you need to send me some pictures and let me know what you're what you think is is it like loads of color changes or is it I know they do all the different ones but the one that the one that I've really seen a lot on floss tube that really has sort of made me think oh you know I quite like it and I, I, and the thing is I can't even put my finger on why I like it so much I just do which is really odd because I don't normally like those types of things or not that I don't like those types of things I like them but it's just not it's not something I would normally naturally go to to stitch so and the fact that this one's actually sort of made me think oh that would be quite nice I was actually thinking maybe I should. Right, can I just check with everyone? Is the music too loud or is the music okay? Because I don't want to blast your ears out. But I don't want it to be so silent that if I all of a sudden take a breather and don't speak, that it's not like, has she disappeared? <laughs> has she gone? <laughs> what music? Music is perfect. Oh, well, someone can hear music. Now, the fact that you said what music makes me worry. Don't hear any music. It's fine. What music? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, reading these comments is quite funny. It's low and does come and go. Okay. Lauren says, can't hear the music at all. Okay, do we all want to hear my music? Because I put music on just so that you didn't all get bored when I shut up speaking. How about now? Lolly, you need to tell me. See, Lauren is stalking the chat, people. She's, she's like... 
she's hiding out, watching in the background, making sure that it's all going according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting a thumbs up that the music's fine. Oh, and someone else has got a crafty, crafty chat Zoom meeting going on. So that's why they can't hear me. That's fine. It's nice and quiet, honey. Thank you. Oh, Lucy Slater. Hello, my lovely. How the devil are you? I miss you. So just just so that people know, Lucy Slater is one of the lovely ladies that goes to the stitching retreat that I go to. Although we haven't been to a stitching retreat for some time. Of which needs to be rectified pronto. So whenever I go to my retreat, Miss Lucy Slater is always there. Because she is like the stitching guru, aren't you, my lovely? I miss you too, sweetheart. Fingers crossed, not for much longer. Oh, I say not for much longer. I know that we still haven't got any that are booked for this year. Which is, yeah, dull. But it's a case that we may just have to wait until next year. So, as you can see, can you recommend any retreats that are any good? Well, there, it depends on whereabouts you live, for starters. So, I mean, I can only really comment about some of the ones in the UK. Um, and there's a group on Facebook, which is the Mad Stitchers, I believe. I think it's the Mad Stitchers. Um, and they they post up quite frequently with all the different ones that take place. Uh, Stitchy retreat coming up in crew April and September next year if you're interested. I'm already signed up for those, Teresa. <laughs> My name was down on the list. I was like, there is no way I'm missing out on this. The lovely Mary Perkins pointed me in the right direction because I'm useless on social media, as always. So I nearly missed them, but apparently my name had already been put down, so they had me covered. Bibs Crafts from the Western Australia. Hello, welcome to my welcome to my little stream. So that I don't feel like I'm a complete and utter loner these days. What's that? Pole Stitches Retreat in Cardiff is brilliant. Sadly cancelled this year. See, everything's cancelling this year. And there we are sitting, oh, there they are sitting there telling us that we're unlocking. And it's like, well, we're not really unlocking, are we? Well, we are, but I'm not feeling the unlocking at the moment. I've completely just goofed this up because I'm busy looking at the chat instead of doing the stitching, people. See, this is how bad this goes when I do these sorts of things. That's it. Let's get back on track, shall we? Is the plastic keeping the rain put upstairs? Oh, yes. We still have plastic up at the back of the house because we still don't have windows. And so far, we have been lucky that all winds that are coming in are coming in from the west. And we're south facing. So as long as we don't get a southerly breeze or a southerly wind with the rain, I should get away without getting waterlogged. But yeah, we're still waiting for the windows. So no change there. No update on the conversion or the build or the only thing that has happened that is, well, yeah, it's exciting is that um, the staircase, the staircase is sort of decided now. So now that me and hubby have decided on the staircase, that should be being ordered on Monday next week. And they assure me, <laughs> famous last words, they assure me that the turnaround time for the staircase will be between two to three weeks for delivery and that's a bespoke staircase so i'm like wow if they can turn a staircase around that quick how comes my glaziers can't sort out my glazing <laughs> <laughs> um 
Um, I'm going to a stitching retreat in Sweden in September. I've been waiting. Oh, oh, in Sweden. I've not heard of any. To be honest, I don't really hear very much about the any European ones. I hear a lot about the US ones, obviously. The US and the Canadian. Um, is the retreats located in, elsewhere? Can't use social media due to work requirements. Um, I think, I think, well, I think Pulse Stitchers, so that's like a, Pulse Stitches in the UK, they, they post stuff up on their website about some of their retreats. I'm not sure about anywhere else, to be honest. I'm quite lucky. I mean, you've got, I mean, I think there's normally like a, a Chatelaine, a Chatelaine um, retreat, a Mirabilia retreat. But again, all of those, I think, are predominantly run through Facebook. And yeah. And I can't say that I've actually been to any of them either. So I wouldn't be able to say what they're like. I don't know if anyone else in the chat has been to any of the other retreats. Hello, Woolly Hatted Stitcher. How are you, my lovely? Have you been able to sit in your lovely garden? Is the new mulch helping with the slugs or has it been raining? <laughs> well, it has been raining, however. Um, so there's been no sitting around in the garden, which was the plan, because I really wanted a, an amazing tan this year, was the plan, and to be able to sit out in the nice air. That hasn't happened as yet. And currently the forecast, <laughs> the forecast for the rest of like this week coming is, is not as great as I would have liked it. But I can't really complain because the temperatures are up. However, the mulch that is on my flower beds has seemed to diminish the slug somewhat now I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you that there's been none and even my husband said that I was taking it to a whole other level when I went out in the garden <clears throat> what day was it um I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday so yeah I'd, I'd been home from surgery for like a day or something stupid and I went out and there was a slug just hanging out on the top of the dahlia so with great effort i had to crutch myself back indoors grab a black glove like a rubber glove crutch myself back into the garden retrieve the slug off of the dahlia and put it into like a little black plastic bag to then go and dispose of him in the garden waste bin but Let's just say, if there was anything more than about two or three slugs, it could have took me forever because it took so long just to move one slug off of a dahlia. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> so at that point, I was just like, yeah, I think I think the slugs might win at this rate. Uh, what have we got? Hello from North Carolina. Hot and humid here. 73% humidity. Stitching on Yule Tide. Welcome by Plum Street. Oh, that's nice and hot. I mean, oh, humidity, admittedly, no one likes humidity. But it is nice and warm. Uh, the Cross, Cross Stitch Guild UK do retreats. Oh, I didn't know that. There's something else. There's another place we could go and look. Uh, no one from Chatelaine retreats yet because it keeps getting moved. Mirabilia ones are fun. and oh, it's, oh, it's good to hear you're well, my lovely. What's the name of the retreat in Sweden? Yep, for uh, European people. I don't know, I could probably travel to Europe, couldn't I? I don't know. I think there's still quite a few on the on the list that I'm not allowed to go to. Hey Keely, welcome to the chat. Thank you. I've been to the Silver Needle two times this year for classes. I've done two classes at Acorns and Threads online and did the Needlework Press online. Wow. You've done a lot considering we're, you know, not able to go on retreats. I'm loving that idea. See, that's what I need. I need some classes. Classes on stuff. You know, if we can't go to a retreat, we might just have to go and find somewhere that does classes. 
and learn something new. Slugs don't like sand. Replace the mulch with sand. <laughs> um, I would, but that would be a whole lot of sand. At least the mulch covers a square footage that's a bit better. And it protects the ground so that... Because the mulch is actually really good because the slugs don't like it on their body because it's quite straw-like. So because it's so hard... It's a bit like sort of putting pebbles underneath them and apparently they don't like pebbles either so and i've already put it down so i'm, I'm not going to try and take it back off because there's well I'm, i can't now anyway <laughs> i'm not able-bodied enough to give anything else a go right now so it, it is what it is this year but that might be a solution for next year so thank you for the heads up with the sand idea because right now i'll give anything a go Hi Yasmin, welcome to the stream, lovely to see that you're well. Hello Teresa from Poland. Gosh I get scissors and go slug snipping. Oh really? <laughs> Tiffany! <laughs> no, no I, I do civilised civilized slug retrieval. Well, sometimes. Sometimes if there's absolutely tons of them, then I lose my temper with them and stick them in a bucket of water because apparently they can't survive a bucket of water. I know I shouldn't say things like that and all nature is nature, but not when they've annihilated all of my dahlias. We understand the slug battle here in Seattle area. I'm pleased to hear that. I'm, I'm, I'm good to hear that it's not just me because I feel like sometimes I'm the only one that gets so upset by the slugs in the garden although i did watch gardeners world last night so for those that aren't from the uk monty don is an amazing man um and we have gardeners world on on a friday night and on last night's show they were talking about slugs in the garden and should we fight them or should we accept them and one thing that did come out of it was that apparently based on the color of your slug will depend on whether your slug eats your dahlias or whether your slug eats anything but there are some slugs that only eat rotten stuff so they're the ones you want but would you believe it when they showed <laughs> when they showed this picture of these slugs and obviously there's these slugs in these little like dishes to show you what the slugs were the one that it eats everything so it'll eat rotten things but it'll also eat you know fresh new baby growth that was the majority so they're the black ones so if you have the black slugs they're the ones that will just annihilate anything in its in its path but if you have i think they were like a a creamy colored one like with a black spot on the top like loads of little like, like a mottled slug there we go we have mottled slugs um apparently don't get rid of that one Leave that one in the garden because that one won't actually eat your your plants. It will only eat anything like rotting in the garden. And if you've got them, then you're much luckier than me because I've got nothing that the you know the big black ones that eat everything in sight, regardless of whether it's you know dying or living. We're running around in the U.S. like chickens doing all the things. Oh. I need to come move there then because I want to be running around doing all the things feel like I, I am starting to get that whole I'm missing out on everything <laughs> so excited to be here I love your channel Teresa you taught me all about full coverage pieces oh you're more than welcome I hope your full coverage is going well Amy ducks eat slugs I'm not sure I'm prepared to have ducks in my garden and I'd need a very big pond for some ducks and I don't have a big enough garden for a pond. Enjoyed your garden tour, so nice that you have your mum so close. Oh, yes, it is, it is lovely having mummy so close. Um, sorry I'm late if this has been already discussed, but how's the hip? It has already been discussed, Barbara, but you can ask. The hip is in recovery mode. It's going to stay in recovery mode for some time now um, and then in about a year's time I will be going in for a hip replacement because he's basically said it's not going to fix it. We've done a temporary stopgap measure which yeah is what it is eh. 
I don't care as long as as long as it's no worse than it was and that there is light at the end of the tunnel that at some point they're gonna make it better I'll go with whatever they tell me and the fact that they're sort of trying to string me out to make it so that I'm as old not as old as possible but to try and hang it out for as long as possible I think is the plan so but not so long that I'm unable bodied which is sort of where we're getting to um, salt blows them up and capfuls of beer will drown them <laughs> that was a slug one obviously my garden is infested with caterpillars yeah I had got a lot of caterpillars on my um, on my maples and my aces apparently my watch is telling me that I need to breathe <laughs> No thanks. We don't need to breathe. <laughs> oh dear. Ducks really eat slugs. Get a pet duck. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how my mum would feel about having a duck, you know, ch chasing around in the garden. <laughs> but it's a good shout. When I get, you know, a garden that's, you know, the size of a, a few acres, you know, I can have a duck pond, then I'll have some ducks. My slugs battle is in my extension, which is a playroom. Every night they come in. Oh no, 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 no. They're not allowed in my house. <laughs> Lim Max Maxus, we call it tiger snail in Germany, will eat other slugs. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I need. I need a sluggy in. I mean, I wouldn't mind, but it said on um, Gardener's World as well that the birds eat the slugs. So I'm like, well, you know, I've got. I don't know five or six bird feeders of which they're always empty like I, I put food out and anyone would think like you know it's like a scene out of a movie because so many birds just come and swarm in on the garden they're interested in the slugs mealworm yes nuts and seeds yes <laughs> fat balls yes slugs apparently not apparently my slugs don't taste as yummy as the food that I put in the bird feeders I think slugs mainly problem is in that Europe and UK because of the damp weather most of the time yeah well you're not wrong there it's definitely damp again today could stream about the pond project <laughs> <laughs> I could stream about a pond project no no I think I'll pass on the my garden's not even big enough for a pond well it probably would be but then if I put a pond in there wouldn't be enough room for my flowers and I'm sorry but it's just not an option <laughs> oh what's this my husband had a hip replacement he's doing wonderful no pain at all do you know what that, that's the bit that makes me laugh so I'm I'm sort of you know all right I am the wrong side of 45 admittedly but I've not I've not got to 50 yet and at times I'm walking around like I'm sort of you know 80 or 90 years old and you know really struggling because it weather definitely has an effect on it like some days it doesn't bother me and then other days it's I I try to get out the chair and, and I look like I'm 90 years old I'm really unable bodied um but I've got a neighbor and he's 57 and he was having all sorts of trouble with his hip and then he went in and had his hip replacement and would you believe it he's, he's more able-bodied than I am now so I'm like well how does that work you know he's banging on the door to 60 and he's you know doing all the things and I'm, I'm not really doing much of anything because every time I go to do something it's like oh, uh, oh or if I if it doesn't hurt at the time it hurts afterwards for days and then it's just not worth it then Teresa have you been to a chiropractor hospital to get a different opinion and suggestion on your hip no, I don't need to. I've, I've seen the inside of my hip and I have two big cartilage lesions. So basically great big holes in the cartilage on the femoral head. So there, there's it's bone on bone. So I know what's causing the hip. I can see it with my own eyes. So, but yeah, it is what it is. But thank you for the, thank you for the thought. I wasn't a cross stitcher but I ran across your videos on full coverage and Annie's Keepers and this year in February I started my first chart and it's full coverage Yoda from oh 
So David, you're now at 48% what completed of your first full coverage. Well done, you. Cheezer, what floss are you using? So we're working on Andromeda, the Mirabilia that really should have been completed a long time ago. And I'm just using the set, the set called for DMCs. And there's a whole ton of black. So I thought, well, since I've got to sit here and, you know, stitch this rather boring black, what better way to do it than with like-minded people? <laughs> so you all get to sit here and watch me stitch just one color of black. <laughs> So Kelly says, my husband had a hip replacement a couple of years ago using an anterior approach at the age of 50. He feels so much better currently running on a tramway milk as I watch this. Oh, on a treadmill. Yeah, I did check with the consultant because that was one of the other issues that I was a bit worried about was, you know, once you have a hip replacement, does that mean that you can't do, you know, you can't do the sorts of things that I've always done? And the only thing that he said, so he said, well, because I'm as young as I am, it will be a ceramic hip that he'll do rather than a metal one because apparently it's harder wearing so it will have a longer lifetime. Um, but what he did say was that at least that way, if I wanted to go back to doing a bit of jogging and a bit of, you know, going to the, going to the gym and doing a bit of fitness, I can still do all of those things. The only thing that I'm not allowed to do um, is to road run. So no running on roads. I can run on grass and I can run on a treadmill as long as there's not massive mileage because it will wear the hip out faster apparently. Big Halloween stitcher. Maybe you can rent a duck. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can rent a duck, but it's a good shout. Maybe, maybe I should go on go on Facebook and sort of put a message out. Has anyone got a duck I can rent? I just need them to get rid of my, my slugs like three times a week. <laughs> duck renting. Um, can you get guinea fowl? I don't know. Oh, no, I don't think we could have one of those in the garden. Some people actually can rent ducks and they're trained to eat slugs. I'm going to have to look at that. Ducks tend to make their own ponds, not always the size and area you'd want them. Well, Tiffany, if that's the case, then there will be no ducks in my garden. <laughs> uh. So Julia says she's starting my Prairie School Out Christmas piece on 28 count one over one. Slow going, but loving it. Christmas? Christmas stitching? Wow. Wow. I was working on winter, do you remember? And said that the the plan was that I wanted it done before the winter got here so that I could put it up. Look how far it got. That's that's, that's as far as it got. I was just like, oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't stitch it. <laughs> it's too snowy and there's no snow. So you're a braver lady than me. I really should get back to that. There's no reason why not to now. Seems as, yeah. Seems as I'm at home. And it's not like I've got loads of other things I have to be doing. Right, I have to say, this chat is moving really fast. So you'll have to excuse me if I keep missing anything that you say. Because if I miss it, and you're asking me a question, please just re-ask the question. And I'll try and see it the next <laughs> on the next turn. Lady Ant Stitches. Hi, Cheese. It's so nice to see you. I'm in South Carolina. Hello there. Welcome to the stream. Slugs in NE US. Is that New York? NE? Nebraska? Oh, come on. You can tell my, my, my knowledge of the US is bad. No problem with garden, but some kind of flying bug eating leaves. Really? Ooh, don't like the sound of that. Cheese. I wonder if all your dancing started the stress. No, apparently it was not the dancing that was the stress. It was the running from the age of 12 that was the stress. 
on the hip <laughs> but what he did say was that actually that's uh, they've done some studies on this as whether people can wear their joints out faster um and the biggest culprit is a hereditary issue and normally we're born with um with some sort of hip not dysplasia but hip underlining issues so for me both my hips have um, impingements so what that basically means is that although the joint goes in so you've got the ball in the socket like this I've got like a bit that sticks out so where is it so like there I've got like a bit that sticks out which then catches and rubs and then slowly but surely over time that changes the way that your hip actually works inside the joint so unfortunately they tend or what they have found is that most people that have some sort of impingement normally have either tears or um, early osteoarthritis -y type things because obviously the hip doesn't work in the same way but the myth about it being that you've worn your hip out as they've said if that was the case you would have anyone that done sport from an early age up until the age of 30 would all need some sort of surgical replacement which is not always the case so I mean obviously if you've got an underlining issue and you do sport then yes you do really wear it out much faster which is probably why I'm in the situation I'm in <laughs> Teresa how is your mum and when will you and your husband resume renovations my mum is very well thank you Cynthia um, she's absolutely loving life right now um, Wimbledon's been on so we basically you know We've conversed while she's sat there in front of the TV because we do love our tennis. So she's been watching her Wimbledon. She loves, she likes football. She mainly likes ladies football. Um, but, and although she doesn't do like football league, she does like um, the Euros and um, the World Cup. And obviously the Euros are on and England are playing on Sunday. So when she's not been watching her lady lady league football on YouTube, um, she's been watching Wimbledon. And then after Wimbledon, I think we've got, not the Olympics, but something along that lines. My mum's very sporty. Well, was back in the day. Um, hence probably the reason why we're so sporty. But because of that, she loves to watch sport. So at the moment, she's all tucked up, thoroughly enjoying herself because there's just always something for her to watch on the telly. She loves it. So she's doing wonderfully, thank you. The renovations upstairs, they haven't actually stopped. So we are in the processes of finalising the staircase. So then obviously that will be a two to three week wait. When that comes up, then that will be fitted. Um... Darren has been upstairs doing, um, not the interior walls, but basically he's just been doing the partition walls so that when we put the stairs in, there'll be walls that basically block off where the staircase is and then put a door on it so that we can easily, we can easily shut off the mess up there is basically what he's been doing. So it hasn't actually stopped. Obviously, I'm not going up there because I can't get up there now. Not until we have some stairs. Because at the, our only way up and down is with the ladder. So, Okay, where are we? She says. Boots 21. I'm just stitching black too. I know. Isn't it boring? <laughs> it's the same colour. It just goes on and on. <laughs> So, Debbie, do you find it easy to stitch over two? I just can't get a grip on it, mainly the counting. Do you know what? When I first started stitching, I had that problem because I could only really stitch on Ada. And then when you sort of, you know, you progress on to the even weave and then you start trying to learn how to stitch over two, it was just like, it's complicated. I don't understand it. So, some people have, well, in conversations that I've had with people, some people find... 
that it works to count the holes between and others seem to find that it helps to count the threads now you're going to be like what's the difference <laughs> i'm hoping that i'll be able to show you so let me give you a, let me quickly put this in and give you a quick because this is how i had to do it i had to decide whether i actually found it easier to count the threads or count the holes okay let's see if i can bring you down bear with pete watch this let's see if this is <laughs> Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that works. So, I don't know if you can see this. So, if you can imagine... Oh, see, this is the problem with black. Okay, you can see my needle wiggling around, right? So, if you're counting the threads, the way you can do it is you just count across one and across two. And then up one and up two. And that will be your diagonal stitch. But if you, I mean, if you're like me, I count the holes. So I'll just go one, two, three, and just diagonally go across. So if I'm bringing my needle up here, because that's mine, I'll just go across two and up two, and then put it down. And then obviously to do the next leg, I just go to whatever is directly down from it, because that way you can't go wrong. But once I'd done that a few times and I literally just kept counting, you know, wherever, once I've got my needle through the hole and then count across two, up two, and that's where it goes down. Once I'd done that repetitively over a number of times, it just sunk in. To the point now where I don't, you just don't count, you don't need to. Because you can see it with your eye it's like a natural but initially it doesn't come naturally so don't think you're any different to anyone else that's new to stitching on even weave or stitching over two because it is at first i think it's because you're so used to just stitching on like that ada type thing where you just stitch over one there isn't any guesswork you don't feel that you need to count anything once you get your head around it and you work out what is best for you whether it be count the threads or count the holes it's really really easy but you have to work out what's right for you what one what one makes total sense in your brain because we're all a little bit different like that i hope that helped that was a long-winded way of showing it and of course i've just told all the rest of you that know how to do it how to suck eggs okay so i'm apologize for that So Patty, turn 60 on Wednesday and doing my first Hade full coverage. It's at 3.6%. Oh my God, it just disappeared off the screen. I was in the middle of reading that. I love your tutorials, listening and watching several times because I love your accent. Patty, thank you so much. And I'm so pleased to hear that you're, uh, you're making good progress on your full coverage. We all love a good full coverage. One of these days I'll actually be able to stitch a full coverage while I'm talking to you. Not quite sure when that will be. Maybe maybe that's um that's another one of those, you know, it's a practice thing. Because at the moment the only thing that I'm capable of doing is outlining my own little borders and stitching one colour and not following a pattern because I can't do three things at once. <laughs> so Kiwi says my kit at the moment is a stamped kit of a cottage on 14 count aid and the stitches are tiny i oh, love you you'll be doing a load of live streams as you recover from your op well that's the plan because i'm so bored already of just being at home and not really having anyone to talk to and it's not like i can go and do my own thing it's it's i mean and there's only i mean not that there's only so much stitching a person can do but you know when you sat there and you've watched all the floss tube videos and there's nothing left on the telly to watch you know and there's only so much radio and books that i can like audio books that i can listen to and then i was just like you know what i feel like i need that's all at the end of something i feel like i need some interaction like with real people like yourselves because i needed your interaction see i'm i'm looking over here but i should be looking down here at you how rude
Hello Elizabeth, welcome to the stream. A Christmas in July, yes I know Christmas in July, I can't do Christmas in July. Christmas is in Christmas and July is July. <laughs> and all those people that are doing all those Christmas ornaments and their Christmas you know, Christmas stitching in July, you, my hat's off to you because I can't do it. But then that, I think that's because I haven't got enough of the seasonal stuff of any season, including the season that I'm in. So maybe that's the problem. Hi, Cheesa. Can I ask, with the skin on your mirabilia, do you do it one over one? Yes, unfortunately I do. <laughs> and I say that because every single time I, I say I get to the end of one, I'm like, I am never doing skin one over one again. I'm not doing it because it just takes so long. But then when I actually get to the chart, I sit there saying, yeah, but it looks so good. And it does. I, I think when I've seen pictures of the two over two of the skin, and then I look at sort of Roses of Provence and some of the other ones that are on Facebook, the skin, when you do it one over one, it just adds that delicateness, just gives it a bit more realism. And yeah, so although it's a total pain and very, very small, it, I personally think it's worth it. But if you're anything like me and you're not very good at backstitch, <laughs> you have to take it to retreats and get people like Lucy Slater to look at it because you just got wiggly arms or, <laughs> hey Lucy. <laughs> oh, i never forget that. Lucy Slater was the was the person that helped me try to fathom out what on earth I was doing wrong with the arms of Roses of Provence back in the day because I was ready to sort of throw her out the window and be done with her. And that's the reason that I like retreats because there aren't, there isn't anyone that, that stitches near me that I go and stitch with or I can meet up with that can maybe give me a hand if I get stuck or, you know, you can bounce your ideas off. But you can do that when you go to a retreat, especially when it's that you know, especially when you sort of you've been to a few of them and it's it's the same people, so you've made some friends and like if you're not sure about something, you can just you you know, you sort of talk to them on a chat or something and they're like, Oh, we'll just bring it with you to the retreat and we'll have a little look at it together. And it's just oh I miss that. I miss that so much. Oh, now I've just missed my Come on, unravel. There we go. To get it up for Christmas. So Julia's doing Christmas stitching because she wants to get it up for Christmas. Well, I know that that's the idea, but I still don't know how you managed to do it. I don't know what's happened, but my thread seems to have got all twisted and messed up now. Um, I'm stitching on a full coverage Christmas piece too. See, there's loads of you. I'm currently stitching. Oh, oh the chat's gone crazy again. Hold on. Let me scroll. I'm scrolling. <laughs> I think I might have missed a few of your comments. Sorry, people. So impressed with how you and hubby are doing on your own remodel. Well... It's definitely going to take us longer than it would do if you bring in a builder, but it's also a lot cheaper. And I get what I want when I want. Sometimes when you've got builders that are coming in to do stuff, they sort of, they put you on the spot because it's like there's no time to, to sort of, you know, look at the space, decide what you like, make the little changes because they're already like wanting to sort of crack on and get it finished. And at times, it's like they they sort of force you into a situation where you have no choice but to but to make a decision, and then and then you could end up sort of thinking, do you know what? If I'd have seen it and I spent a bit of time with it first, maybe I wouldn't have done that. I would have done this. So I quite like the fact that by us doing it ourselves allows for me to sort of you know spend the time in the space and really think about what it is that I want. You know, stupid things like plug sockets. You know, people don't think about these things. 
it's like you you decide that you're gonna you know change the room and put all these plug sockets in and you're like oh yeah well i'm only gonna need this plug and that plug but it's not until you sort of really think okay well you know what am i likely to do up here and what am i going to do there and well what's this part of the room going to be used for and sometimes that visualization of actually well you know that is now what you know at first that might not have been a big enough space for i don't know a chair and a desk for instance but then when you actually go up in the space and you see it and you have a bit of time to sort of hang out up there it's like, actually that's plenty big enough space for a ch for a chair and and a table so therefore I'm going to want to plug near there so it's things like that that makes it so that sometimes the whole not getting it done too quickly works in your favour just not when it comes to the mess unfortunately um, okay I'm missing loads and loads of these comments now so I'm sorry um, wiggly arms <laughs> Lucy remembers the wiggly arms yeah that was a few years ago my lovely but it will, be, it will be nothing that I ever forget because yeah and if it hadn't have been for Lucy my mirabilia probably would have gone into a drawer and never seen the light of day because it was it was her that said you know what you're not even going to see that and I'm like well I can see it now and she's like yeah but if we straighten this up and we do that she said you won't even see that and true enough, she was right. I do like it when other people are right. And you sort of, you know, you take their advice. It's like, should I, shouldn't I? And it's like, oh, okay, well, if she says so, then it must be right. Where do you get your beautiful needle minders? So sparkly. Um, oh. Where do we get them from? I can't remember where I got this one from. I don't really have a go-to place that I get my needle minders from. I just sort of, if I happen to see them on Etsy, or sometimes when I go to the retreats, there'll be ladies at the retreats that make them. And I've got like Etsy stores. And normally it's then that I'll actually order them, but I don't really have too many of them. If I'm honest but I do have some go-to's but normally I think I have to go back on Etsy and check I mean I know Gina Gina's is it Gina's boutique um, there was a lady at the Scottish retreat that I went to I got some off of her but yeah there's there's just a couple of places on Etsy that I get mine from but that's where I tend to get my needle minders from Do you not see Donna anymore? No, I'm afraid I don't. No. I'm also working on two Christmas pieces year round. Wow. So you just stitch Christmas then? It's just all about Christmas. <laughs> Hello in Portugal. Welcome to the stream. How are you getting on with your card making and knitting? Um... Honestly, card making, um, I haven't really had a chance to do any of that. Not with sort of the whole build work that's been going on. Um, and the knitting, well, after the terrible situation that happened with the, with the shawl. And with the fact that it had an appendage, it sort of put me off a little bit. I, I keep saying that I would like to do it again, but I, it's, you know when you just say, I just foresee the same thing happen again. I think, I think knitting for me is the same as sort of some stitching. That unless I've got someone on hand that can actually be in the room to show me what I'm doing wrong, because when people try and give you orientation, <laughs> orientation assistance with knitting, at either at the end of a camera or trying to explain it it doesn't make any sense to me and I'm like I don't understand so it's like yeah, it's not very helpful I had I actually have to have someone help me understand what it is that I need to do so so yes I haven't picked up any knitting even though I've sort of thought it would be nice to do you know I mean I would love to say that I would love to do some socks but hey come on let's be honest 
I've got no chance of being able to do socks, have I? I mean, how am I going to do socks if I still can't even do a a shawl, a very basic shawl at that, and just not end up with sort of I don't know some weird looking hanging bit off of it? <laughs> um. I change with the spring piece so it's not always the same. That's good to hear, Daisy. I'm pleased that you've got something other than Christmas that you're stitching. Tatiana says, Hi, Teresa. Love your channel. What brand of fancy floss silks do you like most? I want to try some but not sure where to start. Um, well, there are lots, aren't there? There are, there are lots of silk threads that we all love. My personal preference, and that this is, and with with silk flosses, it's very much personal preference. But my personal preference is um, Avera Schwa's silk threads. They are just oh, for me, they feel like butter. Is the only way to describe it. They feel like butter. They just glide through your fabric they also i don't find that they fluff up too well say fluff up that sounds wrong they don't fray so like sometimes you can get some silk threads that can be not hard to stitch with but you just have to be a bit careful with them and with the avera schwa's I, I find that i don't need to try hard with them at all let me see i've got some here next to me because one of my projects has them so, my Elizabeth Weston has silk threads. And, yeah, I can't even describe to you just how, I mean, the shine on them is amazing anyway. So, they've got like a really, really good shine on them. Um, but the beauty of them is, although they're very, very soft, like much softer than a DMC, um, they're not they're not sort of fragile so as an example so for instance like so it looks in all intents and purposes like a DMC but I'll guarantee you if you ever get some Avera Schwarz and then you thread up a needle and you stitch with a DMC for 10 stitches and then you pick up one of these and you, you stitch with this for 10 stitches, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> but I think everyone's different. Everyone, ha because of people's different like tensions with their stitching and you know the way they stitch, everyone's sort of preference of silk threads um, and fancy flosses are all different but for me I just find them delightful to stitch with more so than I don't know some of the others the other one that I really really like stitching with as well so you know if if I you know if I had a, a number of options to pick from um, it would be silks for you so silks for you threads are really really nice too Honestly, I think that only the only threads that I really have struggled with, like struggled to use, is some of the um, well, the Valdani threads. I don't get on with them, and I really don't know why, but I don't get on with them. Um, I don't really think there's anything else that I dislike that much, to be honest. But I do have preferences. Um, Teresa, have you ever stitched with silk threads? I'm currently stitching with Avera Schwarz. I always stitch with DM, so so it was a challenge in the beginning. Annette, so when you say it was a challenge, what was what was the challenge, my lovely? I, I found them very easy to switch from DMC to Avera Schwarz because they were just so much softer but admittedly then for some people if it's too soft i think that might be where the struggle comes in especially if you've like you know you've got quite a strong tension um the addicted stitcher no i have so many whips these two just get lost between the others <laughs> uh. 
You introduced me to full coverage last September and now I have seven haze on the go and many more charts waiting. <laughs> Yay, applaud you. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I was pretty much the same so oh, I'll only ever do one or two of them because they're so big and they're this and they're that and then the reality was that before you know it I just fell down this massive rabbit hole that well I want this one and I want that one and, and before you know it you just end up with loads and loads of stitching and loads and loads of charts that you want to stitch all full coverage so yes welcome to the world of full coverage um how do we say that Shavaz24, I would love to help you with your knitting. I would love someone to help me with my knitting because it's atrocious. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you saw. I mean, you're saying you would love to help me, but did you actually see the disaster of my shawl with the extra appendage where I'd somehow reduced on the wrong side and increased on the other side? And I have no idea how that even happened. But yeah, I would love someone to sort of take me under their wing and teach me how to knit properly because... My nan would be horrified if she saw some of the things that I've managed to not create so far. So Nanette says, it's Christmas in July stitching in the US, stitching ornaments and other Christmas items. Well, yay you. And well, you could say that I did. I mean, maybe, maybe then I need to sort of, I don't know, do some more stitches on him on my winter. What do you reckon? Maybe that's what I need to do. Just so that I feel like I'm, 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 I'm in the clan. <laughs> I'm doing Christmas in July. Um, socks are actually pretty easy. Watch Kay on the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. Do you know, the, the problem is... See, now this is what makes me laugh, is that I can quite easily watch YouTube and Flosstube where people demonstrate what they're doing, and I can follow it to a T. Knitting, I don't know whether it's the orientation of the knitting needles or something like that, but when they and, and they all hold it different. So when they hold their needles and their and their and their knitting wall, they sort of wiggle it around their finger and they sort of do this. You know, they've got like this little wiggle on like that. Where they just sort of me, I'm like I've got these the two the two knitting needles and then I have to take my hand off and hold the thread and then I have to do this. So when they're doing it, it all looks like it's one big smooth motion. And when I'm doing it, there's just, you know, drop stitches, needles everywhere. You know, normally the threads come either too loose. And then, then, I, then I can't get my needles back into the, into the hole because it's so tight. It's a disaster. Like I say, it needs to be more of a hands-on demonstration and assistance rather than a, rather than a you know, at the end of a podcast because orientation is a huge issue for me. <laughs> Socks are one of the easiest patterns. Easier than a shawl, I think. Really? I'm not quite sure about that. But I'll have to, I'll have to see. What type of stand are you using today? So today I'm using my uh, Velka Batoki stand. Um, just thinking how I can show you this. It's this one. So it's like a little a little desk stand. Oh, now I've completely confused myself as to where I was. There we go. Should we move this camera back out a bit so that I can see? That's it. It's my little trusty stand. Do you know what though? I have ordered a Larry table stand with clamp. Just to try it for when I'm doing like my recording because apparently they're really easy to use as well so I thought I would try and get one of those and give that a go right where are we we need, we need some more black can't believe we're still stitching black really how much black is in this chart okay more black if we wasn't bored of black already, we're just going to have another another thread of black. So where are we, people? Having so much trouble with haid, it's so big, can't use frame. Have to use a small ring. It's 525 stitches by 752. Oh, wow. That is a big one, isn't it? That's a very big boy. I haven't come... A, well, I'm trying to think how big a, 
Peacock's Lagoon is. It's big, but it's not that big. But it is big. It goes. It's, it's on my biggest scroll bars, I have to say. Come on, eyes. Don't fail me now. I'm stitching Evening in the Park. Your Evening in the Park just took my breath away, so I had to do it. Oh, yeah. I, do you know what? The, the more I keep looking at it, the more I'm like, Teresa, you really should you really should just crack on and get it done now. But I'm really struggling with the trees. But I do really need to, to sort of start focusing on like a focus piece. I mean, that was what I was thinking. I was like, well, if I did, I don't know, a tree... A tree every three days, for instance. It wouldn't actually take me that long to stitch all the trees on the top. But. It's just the whole sitting there stitching them. Because I, I, I get really frustrated with stitching the trees. But it really does need. I was thinking that the other day. Because you know when you're sort of sitting there thinking. Right, okay. All this time off that I've got. I need to really start thinking about what I'm going to do with my time. You know, and let's just see how much I can get done, as well as actually convalesce and spend a bit of time in the garden. So I was thinking I really do need to sort of start tackling some of the projects. I'd said that I was going to make them more of a project piece because they're, you know, they're not that they're so old, but I've had them such a long time and they really should be finished by now. I mean, if I didn't have so many projects. <laughs> and I only had like two or three projects to stitch on then it wouldn't be a problem because you'd just keep rotating them and they'd all get a touch point but as time's going on I seem to be acquiring more and more charts and more and more projects and none of them are particularly small not as yet anyway um oh stitch, hold up where are we Maybe you can try a Q-snap. Yeah, that would work. I tend to stitch more dark and gothic things, so I've been working on, on the Guardian of the Woods. Only 10% left to go, and I've done over 800 stitches today. Well done, you. You've definitely done more than me, that's for sure. So you, you obviously don't mind stitching black, then, if you like dark and gothic things. Uh, what kind of stitching frame are you using? I need something like this. What kind of stitching? Well, I'm using the Q snap, so it's on a Q snap, snap, and then it's on like the little, the little stand. But like I say, I have ordered a table clamp, a Larry table clamp, and corner. It's like I've got a corner clamp on it that I'm going to try using for when I'm doing sort of record like these videos where I'm sat at my office, and because it can just sort of stay attached to the table. And then that way, this little beauty, my my little desirable, adorable Potoki, um, will go in the bedroom so that it's always in there. And then when I go travelling to my stitching retreats and things like that, I can take two of them without actually having to take a massive great big floor stand. Because Lucy knows how much room my floor stand takes up, don't you Lucy? So I'm trying to... I'm trying to make it so that my stitching retreats are, are, you know. I mean, you never know. One of these days I might fly out to the States and go to a stitching retreat in the States. In which case, I can't exactly pack my massive great big floor stand up and come over, can I? I'd need to bring something small. So, I need to be adapting. Hello, Sandra from Germany. Welcome to the stream. Is it... It is the different method that confuses you. Watch the same person until you get one method down. I'm, ass I'm assuming we're talking about the knitting now. I haven't seen anyone that knits like me. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah, no, th there isn't anyone that knits quite like I knit. And if I was to sit here and do a knit with me rather than a stitch with me, you'd all be falling about laughing, especially those that actually knit. In fact, I think people that don't knit would still find it pretty damn funny watching me, watching me knit.
start with bulky or Aran yarn. Socks need tiny needles and fingering weight yarn. Yeah, I've tried that, and that's not too bad, but it's the whole dropping of stitches that's the problem, and the orientation. Yeah, it's, it's just not good, whichever way I try. Have to go, hope you... Oh, Tiffany, thank you for hanging out, and it's lovely for you to have visited. Thank you. Um, just got my patoki after ordering it September 2020. Thanks for your video. I saw it on. Oh, um, how are you finding it? Are you loving it? I love mine. Mine is just the, the cutest and easiest things to work with as yet. It's I love it. Absolutely love it. What's this? Would love to, but it's five feet wide and five feet won't, oh, five foot won't fit in a frame and can't hold them. Yeah, no, that's a very big piece. That is a very big, well, it's going to be interesting to see how big that is when that's done, when you stand up <laughs> and you hold it up. <laughs> Tell us about your piece. How many threads? What kind of floss your aid are? So the piece that I'm working on at the moment, if you don't already know what this one is, is Andromeda which is the Mirabilia. It's sort of the bane of my life at the moment, but I'm adamant that it's going to be done. I mean, to be honest, when I'm not far off. So we're, this, this line here is that the second line up from the bottom. So we're, we're almost there, but then I've just got a little bit more skin to do. And then it's the beading and stuff like that. Um, it's being stitched on. Hmm, what is this? This is, 28 count Lugana chromatic alchemy fabric in the colorway Cyrus and it's being stitched on at 2 over 2 apart from the skin which is being stitched 1 over 1 but I can't unravel out and show you a face because yeah it will take me forever to put her back on my Q-snap Okay. Um, I ordered a Velka Mini in December, expecting it now in July. So excited. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. You'll have to let me know what you think of it. For me, it's been a total game changer because it's just so versatile and easy to use and small and, you know, it can go in your handbag. You can use it as a lap stand. You could use it as a table stand. It basically just... For me, it's just ticked all of the boxes. I think we think black is boring because almost all charts use it and many of us, a lot of it too. Yeah, there are a lot of charts that, I think the black stands out on the fabric and it, and it does make an impact when it's stitched. But it's the actual stitching of it. I mean, there's there's that heaven and earth design chart. You know the one. There's oh, I'm trying to think who it was, but there was someone. I think it was Shazzy C. She stitched a heaven and earth design cat, and almost all of the back of it, all of, all of the background was black, or was it that it was a black cat? I can't remember. But all I remember thinking was, wow. That's a whole lot of black. And I was like, I don't think I could sit and stitch all of that black. I mean, no doubt there were all different shades of black because that's the only thing with the hides that looks like it's just all one color until <laughs> you start stitching it and you realize there's, you know, millions of colors or shades, should we say, of black. Oh, I've just put that in the wrong hole, peeps. get that right I've got 702 black stitches left I don't know how many I've got left hopefully not as many as that I don't think it's anywhere near as many as that not on this at least at least mine is only a few a few more stitches of black do you recommend any apps for iOS that is equivalent to pattern keeper 
No pattern keeper is a game changer, I have to say. For those Android users, it's, yeah, it's really, really good. I mean, even I use pattern keeper. So I've got, I've got an iPad that I use as well as an Android. So if I've got a chart that's a hide, a full coverage chart, then I use it on pattern keeper. Some of the long dog samplers, they can be used on the pattern keeper. But if there's a chart that I can't upload, such as a Mirabilia or, you know, um, like a Cricut Collection or some of those other charts, um, I use good notes. And I mark mine off using good notes. So I just import it as an image and then use the highlighter to highlight off in different colours where I've parked a thread and where I've stitched a thread. But that I'll only use that now if the chart won't import into Pattern Keeper. Because I know there are some compatibility issues for some charts. And especially the Mirabilias, because the Mirabilias, I'll, I'll scan the chart and then put a copy of the scan, or scan it in and then import it into GoodNotes on my iPad so that I can still work digitally. Apart from when I'm sitting here doing this and talking to you, because I've actually got the pattern down there. So I'm working off paper today, which is rare. I've tried silks and it was good to stitch with, but love DMC more. I have to get from other countries. That is difficult now with the new tax system we have got in the EU. Yeah, I must admit, I mean, a lot of people do love the DMC. Um, and of course, there is the cost implication, no matter which way you look at it. I mean, silks are expensive, regardless. Um, so... I tend to find that I will I will decide normally ahead of time when I pick a new project. You know, is it one of those projects that I'm going to absolutely love it and I know I'm going to absolutely love it, so therefore I'm prepared to throw a bit more money at it? Or is it just a chart that it's like, well, you know, it's nice, but it's not, not that it doesn't wow me. But there's, I don't know, there's just some charts that I'm like, oh, I have to stitch that with silks. I don't know why. Not that it probably doesn't make any difference. Apart from when you're using some of the variegated threads. But for me, I absolutely love the feel of stitching with the silks personally. But again, all very personal personal preference. But then all stitching is, I think. I'm going to hop off there right now and follow you. I've never posted my work as I'm still in the new category. Only been stitching since last summer. Well, Brittany, we all have to start somewhere. And trust me, everyone on the on here knows that my journey started on, on Floss Tube as someone who knew nothing. So you'll learn a lot. We always do. Um, come to StitchCon. <laughs> I, you know, I should. I should just, you know, pack my suitcase and be like, that's it, I'm going. I'm going abroad. But if I can't if I can't go to a stitching retreat here, I'll go to one somewhere else. I must admit, that is on my um that is on my bucket list. That I need to make sure that I go to a stitching retreat in the US. Because I don't know. Don't get me wrong, the stitching retreats in the UK are lovely and, and I've been to quite a few of them now. Um but then when I sort of see the stitching retreats in the US, I don't know, they they look sort of different and there's lots and lots of stuff going on. Ours are very much all just about the stitching and the people and you'll have the odd like person that will turn up with some stuff but not quite in the same way as they do or that it appears in, in the States. And plus there's like lots of stitching shops. It's almost as if they do retreats where you can go shopping as well, which... Who doesn't like a little bit of stitching shopping? Come on. What's this, Lucy? Your stand isn't so bad. It's the big floor light that makes me laugh. <laughs> Where's the eyes? The eyes the, the eyes foul me. I'm, I'm an old lady, remember, and my eyes, my eyes struggle unless I have very good lighting. It's no good sticking me in a little dark corner. 
<laughs> Teresa, are you knitting English style and we're watching Continental style, I guess? I have no idea what type of style. It's called the Teresa style stitch. The, the Teresa style knitting is what it is. <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> Let's put it like this. <laughs> it's not something that should be seen. <laughs> Maybe I should, I don't know, because I know Lucy does, Lucy does um, knitting. So maybe I should go to a retreat, show Lucy how I knit and she'll be able to tell me how I'm knitting. Or, or that or just fall about laughing at me, one out of the two, because I don't think it resembles any type of actual knitting. You knit like my sister, the style you use is called wrap around. Oh, is it? There we go. That's what I use. I use a bit of wrap around. It's called Teresa wrap around. <laughs> it's definitely uh it's definitely its own style there's no finesse or flow that's for sure i'm sure i'll get it if if i had enough time and the right instruction i'm sure it it would be doable but yeah it doesn't come natural right now I'm stitching a haid and I'm at 17%. Congratulations, well done. That's what I like to see. Any progress on a haid is progress. It was your channel and Lovecraft Forever that got me into stitching my first project. So thank you. I appreciate your time and effort. You have taught me a lot. I'm pleased that I've taught someone something. Anything that helps anyone, to be honest. Because, yeah. I remember when I first sort of found it and yeah there was just so much that I needed to know and just so many questions that I had that I was just like wow you need a community of people for that don't you just to sort of like put you in the right direction so if I've helped in any way then I am so pleased oh what just happened did the, did the chat just move it did oh wow what happened there I knit and do the continental method, but teach people the throwing method. Oh, now see, now now, now we're going down a whole rabbit hole of I have no idea what anyone's talking about. This is where the knitters come into play. I don't know about throw away. The only throw away that I do is throwing away of the project when it goes severely wrong because it doesn't look at all like it's supposed to. Or isn't, or is even remotely usable because mine's not. I mean, I did think about possibly using it, but then, well, is it in here? It is in here. Have you seen, have you seen the show in question that we're talking about? The one with the extra appendage on it? Have you, do you know what, do you know the reason why I'm like so adverse to sort of ever picking up the knitting needles again? Because it's so bad. Maybe I should show it to you and then you'll all understand what I'm saying. It's bad. Let me get it. Hold on, I'm gonna have to just roll myself because I can't get up. Well, I can, but it will take forever. So I'm just going off camera for a moment. And as if by magic, oh, nearly. Nearly took the camera out, people. So. It was all going so well. And then that happened. See? <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Or why it's over there. <laughs> Just. What do you do with that? I did think that maybe I could tuck it in and wear it. I mean, I did okay, I think, on the... Um, yeah, so the, the actual design is there. Yeah, let's put it over the stitching. So, and it, it's only got a couple of holes in it. But we was doing great until... Until, sort of, I don't know, this happened. 
but yeah. So it sort of put me off because I put all this effort in thinking that I was going to end up with a shawl at the end of it and now it's a shawl that is unwearable because of the appendage because if anyone saw that hanging they'd be like something's happened to your shawl love. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah no so welcome to my welcome to my really bad knitting experience people the worst bit about it was that I didn't even notice it if I'm honest I didn't notice it at all until I got right to the very end of it and was just like that can't be right what's going on but by then it was already too late and because I'm I'm not a knitter enough that I would be able to sort of take stitches back out without dropping them all and sort of I was just like well I'll just keep going because maybe maybe it writes itself at the end how wrong could I be <laughs> Daisy yes it's very different so different I'd never wear it <laughs> it's not bad not bad at all your tension is just off <laughs> keep at it your tension will improve <laughs> <laughs> oh what's this Nanette you could block it it would be fine really I'm not sure I'm not sure that little extra appendage is going to be fine that's like <laughs> I mean how big... <laughs> how big is that that's <laughs> see it's supposed to go like this just so that's supposed to go there how's that going to work she says Look at it. I mean, it's like, how long is that? That's nearly like half a foot, if not bigger, of appendage just hanging on the corner. Even with blocking it, I don't think I don't think I can stretch the rest of it to match that. <laughs> Susan, my hands are actually itching to help you with your shawl. <laughs> it's way past help, my love. <laughs> I'm not really sure there's anything we could do about that. Uh, Teresa, I'm so sorry. I have to laugh with you. I've knitted scarves before because they're easy. You need to stick to cross stitch. See, Cynthia, you're, you're just feeling the love, my love. <laughs> That's how I felt about it when that happened. <laughs> it looks all right, doesn't it? Oh, well, if you can make it be proud. <laughs> One question I do have is how to deal with confetti. A hundred stitches and 75 are, are each their own colour. The back of my work looks terrible and I've wasted so much thread. Stop starting each. That goes with full coverage, I'm afraid. That's just the way it rolls. And, and we roll with it because it doesn't matter what the back looks like. And it doesn't matter how much thread you think you're wasting. But it is confetti is confetti is the only bit that I I struggle with is it like you say you just sort of sitting there going oh what another color change and another color change but they're always a little bit heavy on the back because of the amount of stitches and changes that we do it's not supposed to be pretty on the back of a full coverage I don't need I crochet but you didn't do bad it doesn't matter if you wrap around your yarn there is no right way just as long as you make the stitch mm, yeah i'll argue with that of whether you know i mean it's, it's embarrassing to sit on a train with my knitting needles and pretend that i'm a knitter because people can obviously see that i'm like i look like a child <laughs> doing it <laughs> yes wet it and block it to dry i have no idea what that is wetting and blocking to dry might need a little assistance with that. I feel like a failure because the back is supposed to be pretty tight. Is pretty rock too. Goth mum, no, the back isn't supposed to be pretty on a full coverage. Not really. I mean, I've got some of mine. If you saw the back of them, you would be horrified. If I had any to hand that wouldn't require me to get up and get off this chair, I would prove the point. Maybe I'll do that in my next video. I'll I'll prove the point that they're horrendous on the back. So it's fine. If it looks horrendous on the back, it's fine. It's the back. Um, Angela, my hide has 53,600 of one colour. That's a lot. 
You are a beautiful needle worker. I have learned lots from you. No knitting though. <laughs> don't, don't follow my lead on the knitting. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's not a cool way to go. <laughs> uh, is, so Susan reckons there's a lot that she can do. Really? Okay, well... I'm going to trust your judgment. All right, may, maybe there's a challenge there yet to teach Teresa how to how to knit at the end of a at the end of a Skype or without actually being in the room. <laughs> you could put a knot in it and pretend it was supposed to be like that. Donna, that's a good idea. We could try that, but then I would look a bit silly. I wanted something that just sort of flowed with its angle and stuff, not have this like knot. <laughs> <laughs> hanging at the side of me but it's, it's a good idea hola Teresa started a hade in June one over one full full cross on 25 count even wheat fouled turned fabric round and two over one tent stitch fouled waiting for 18 count aid to arrive oh I'm so sorry I don't mean to laugh it's not funny really was it that bad did you really struggle the question is, have you ever stitched, um, so what is it that you tried? You tried one over one full cross on 25 count. And then you turned the fabric round and you went two over one tent stitch fouled. So what is it that you, that you think you're struggling with? Is it, is it the count that's the issue? Have you ever stitched on the even weave before? Not that that makes any difference, but I, I do under... I mean, this is it. For some people, it, you know, if you keep persevering, it, it will just come naturally. But for others, it takes a while for you to grasp what's going on. But sometimes it can be as much of depending on your tension. You won't get the look of stitch that you're looking for, which is why everyone's different about whether they like to stitch on Ada or even weave or whether they're a two over one or whether they're a ten stitch stitcher or one over one on a 25 count it, sometimes it can be it's not necessarily the count or the stitch it's it's our method our method of stitching because we all stitch slightly different whether that be tension how much tension you put on your thread versus you know how much tension you have in your stitching like the in-hand stitches stitch completely different to people that stitch using two hands but you have to let me know how you get on with the 18 count Ada you could use it as the shawl pin placer in the US we would have called an artisan shawl an artisan shawl so what would it be hold on let me reread that you could use it as the shawl pin placer okay i might need to google this a pin a shawl pin placer new one okay does everyone know what she's talking about the little enlightenment <gasps> Dark Frayer Stitch says, The back of my cross stitching is never nice. I happily, I happily bridge, not across too much, open space, and don't mind leaving my backs ugly. Right there with you. It's not supposed to be pretty on the back. Far from it. It's not like a sampler where we're going to turn it round and inspect the back to make sure it's as equally beautiful as the front. Of which, I'll confess that my samplers don't even look like that. They look just as raggedy on the back as anything else. But if no one's seeing the back of my work, I don't mind. The only people that see the back of my work is you if I share it. And my framer. And myself. That's it. No one else knows. So it can be as messy as you like on the back. Two one six. It takes practice. If you've been on 
getting it neat at the back, try not to carry threads too far and run the ends under the same colours. Yeah, good shout. It looks more like you misread the pattern or the pattern may have an error. What, you mean with my shawl? <laughs> no, that's that was... I, I, I ended up... I think... See, this is it. I say I'm not very good at I'm not very good at knitting, but I think I might have. Uh, well, I think at the time I sort of worked out what I'd done wrong. So I think this bit grew longer than it should have done, and this bit seemed to sort of decrease, and it was almost as if it's missing off the end of this. So I think somehow, and I still don't know how this happened. I think I was decreasing on the wrong. So I think at some point I must have flipped it round the other way and decreased on the wrong side and increased on the other side which then made it so that it went off out like that instead of straight down and this bit extending I think that's what went wrong but how that could even go wrong I do not know so I don't see how I could orientate it round the wrong way because if I'm stitching this way and then I'm stitching that way I don't understand how that could have gone wrong but hey, says the unknowledgeable knitter. Um, just wear it with pride and put a needle minder on it as jewelry. It looks just witty. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> what if it was to drop out and just be like, flip? I'd be like, oh no, <laughs> it's my extra bit. Um, What have we got? My cross stitch back is never pretty. It will be interesting to see what my first hayed back will be like. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, about what the back of our stitching looks like. Does it matter? Really? What is the importance of having a very pretty back? When no one sees it. I mean, no disrespect. It's a bit like Andromeda here. I mean... Bearing in mind that there's absolutely no reason why she shouldn't have a pretty back, right? Because she's not full coverage. And she doesn't look pretty, does she, at the back? Look at it. I don't know. I don't know why everyone's so keen to make sure that they've got a very pretty back. Unless I was showing everyone the back. That's just my personal take. Especially if you love the front. If you like the front and you love the front and the stitches look pretty and, you know, everything looks at exactly how you want it. I don't think it matters about the back. I think the only time it gets a bit tricky with the back is if it gets so full that you start to struggle to sort of pass your needle back underneath the stitches. That can get a little frustrating. But that's normally when there's less on the back than when there is more on the back if that makes any sense so Sophie says still waiting on my Potoki order in November hoping it comes soon as it's just started has just started once upon a time fairy SSMC starting from the bottom oh lovely well fingers crossed the Potoki order will come through soon I know there's quite. A, I know that there are a few of you that are still waiting on them. They must be. Uh, they must be doing well. Love them, but they are. I mean, well, for me, it's a deal breaker. I love. I love my Batoki stand. Hence the reason why I'm using it now. While I'm sitting here talking. Um, it's been fun, but I have to go. Tatiana, bye. Thank you ever so much for hanging out with me. It's been lovely. Yeah, you're still on. I had to get off early to get some lunch. So glad to see you. Hi Tara, welcome to the stream. It does look like you switch sides. It's easy to do. I usually put a stitch marker on the right side so I know which side I'm supposed to be on when I pick my project back up. Now, Candy, I totally agree with you because I had a stitch marker on it and it didn't help me. Not at all. I still didn't have any clue that I was on the wrong side. So, yeah. So Nanette's saying... A shawl pin or clock clasp it helps keep the shawl on or in place. Oh, I'm going to have to Google that now. I'm going to have to go Google to find out what that is. Yeah, I don't care about the back because I'll be the only person who sees it as I'm also framing it myself. <laughs> yes, see, 
there's another thing that I, I don't turn my hand to very often is the framing. I leave that I leave that for someone else to do, but I still don't care whether the back's scruffy or not. I think there's only some projects that I've really cared whether the back looks overly scruffy, but and that's my new finish because obviously it's got cut work in it. So if it's too scruffy on the back, you'll see you'll see through where the cut work is. I haven't showed you that actually, have I? I've only actually posted that on Instagram. I have a finish. So you're gonna get a little sneak peek of the finish, people. You know, it's just like, I first come out of hospital and I was just like, right, I need to really focus on something. And I was like, what have I got that will give me that, yay, a finish? Because there has to be something that I'm close, I'm getting close to a finish. And then I remembered that I had my autumn promise, which was almost there. So I'd done a big push. And finished it. Um, I'm losing my place on the stream. You're all chatting away. <laughs> um, where are we? Sorry, I missed what you're actually working on. Is it Andromeda? Yes, it is. Looks like the right colours for her, so maybe it is. Yes, it is. Here she is. And I'll be much happier when she's done. But would you believe this, this section here at the bottom is this section here. So other than filling the rest of this out and then a little bit more skin and some beadwork, she should be done. So I can put her to bed because I'm sort of done with her now. Um, I'm with you on the back of cross stitch projects. I don't get the thrill of having a nice back. I'm not going to judge anyone for their back. No, me neither, including myself. Everyone talks about it being pretty, but that should be the result of making it so that the dark colours don't show through light colours and not too much lumpy or not too lumpy no I agree that's my next start for my birthday yay new starts we all like a new start what does SSMC so that's a story keep max colour is what that is and that's the heaven and earth full coverage that's what SSMC stands for Or is it supersized? Oh, sorry. No, not SS, not Story Keep. It's a supersized MC, which basically means it's a monster. <laughs> My partner told me the other day, can't you make the back a bit nicer? I'm like, what? He doesn't know anything about stitching and no one can see it, so why? Totally agree. Cross stitch happy Elenia. Elenia? I hope I said that right. I totally agree doesn't matter what your partner says anyway it's what you think my love uh, I never care about the back of my projects no one will see it anyway there's only one piece that I do care and that's the piece on the tapestry that I got from my grandmother to finish for her oh well yeah I think it's a bit different if you're doing it for someone Oh, lovely stream. How are you managing to do a pattern and avoid copyright? I'd love to do something like this. But there isn't any copyright because I'm not showing you my chart. So I don't need to worry. You can sit and watch me sti stitch it. I can, I can, I'm allowed to, to stream that. But you're just not allowed to see the actual chart. If I was to share the chart on the stream, then I would be in trouble and I would be in breach of copyright. I think that's the case, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? So I can stitch it because that's no different to sitting there chatting to you while streaming and, and knitting a pattern. As long as I don't show you the pattern, it's fine. The Patoki frames are just so beautiful. Hubby made me a table stand with the PVC pipes to use until the Patoki came in and it works great, but it's ugly. <laughs> As long as it's functional, that's what it's all about. There is function, but I have to say, I mean, I did have, I think I did try to make one of those UPVC ones once, back in the day. Um, and I agree with you, it's, it's not the prettiest thing out of the box, but it is functional and it does do the job. So as long as it does the job, for now and then you can have your pretty little thing when it turns up it 
it's my first project and I think I'm just putting too much pressure on myself. Goth mum, I think you might be right. I think you should uh, chill a little bit with it. You just enjoy it. Enjoy the stitching. Enjoy the process. And full coverage stitching isn't like anything else. It isn't like samplers. It isn't like any any of the other types of stitching where you know everyone goes on about you know how pretty it has to look at the back and you know everything has to be smart and even i mean the beauty about the full coverage which is why i've always said they're so forgiving for beginners is that one it's just little x's there's no back stitch there's no cross you know there's there's no there's no pull, pu partial stitches um there's nothing too complicated but as well as you can actually put stitches in the wrong place on one of these full coverages and if you put one or two stitches in the wrong place no one would know and i would argue the fact that if you knew at the time and then went on to stitch another hundred stitches and i said to you now show me the stitches that you put in the wrong place you'd be hard pushed to find them so forgiving and you don't need to worry about, you know, you can't run your thread at the back because you'll see the thread through the fabric, which you can't do with other projects because you'll see it. So yeah, cut yourself some slack, my love. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. And you'll always know whether you would, you know, whether you're liking it once you get to sort of like a page or a page and a half and it's like, actually, it doesn't look too bad after all. You do such beautiful needlework. Thank you. I'd argue that point. I don't ever think mine is particularly neat. You know, it's like I watch other people stitch and it's like they make it look so sort of, you know, so, you know, beautiful and and then I watch me do it and I'm like, oh, there's a bobble there and maybe they, those stitches aren't laying as flat as they should be but hey I enjoy myself I can never even do county cross stitch I do stamped ones and love them no matter how big that's well it's, it's whatever we like isn't it that's the beauty of, of our hobbies you know whether it be county cross stitch works for some Stamped cross stitch for others, tapestry for others, diamond painting for others. Admittedly, I haven't tried stamped as yet. I had a little try at tapestry once and I wasn't quite sure that I was feeling, feeling it for that. Hello all from South Central Canada. I don't hear any music at all, but then I'm deaf in one ear and half deaf in the other. <laughs> no wonder I don't hear any background music. <laughs> I do. I did put it on rather low because I didn't want to blast everyone's heads off. Um, but I was just sort of thinking that if I found myself sort of not running out of things to say, but if I went really quiet because I was in deep in concentration, I didn't want it to be too quiet because then you might be sitting there thinking, oh, she's frozen. A stream stopped working. I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for teaching your parking method and full coverage tips. I am so pleased that it's helped you. Sorry, I'm very new to cross stitch mostly crochet and knitting where are full coverage charts most available uh, well the full coverage charts are available all over the place so it depends on what sort of charts you like but I personally tend to go to heaven and earth design for mine um, but I know that there's also hmm, where else is there Come on, friends, in the chat, my full coverage ladies. Where else do you get yours from? Um, you've got pain and free crafts, do full coverage. Um, is it Artisan or someone do full coverage? There's lots of different places. I 
I have half cross and back stitch on this one. I challenge myself maybe too much. I will email a pic when I'm proud of it. You do that. Make sure you do because you will be proud of it. It's just uh, just patience and and don't you know don't overthink everything. If you overthink it, you complicate it when it really isn't as complicated as it seems. But sometimes it is because we we're not confident with what we're doing. So that's the beauty of of this community. If you're not sure and you've got Facebook, reach out, put pictures up, show people what you've done, what your question is, and normally there will always be someone that can help you. Because that that is the beauty of this community, either on Facebook or YouTube or some of the groups. There's always if there's something that you need to know or that you you not you don't think's quite right, there's always someone that can help. Even Instagram, they're great. Gotta love it. Gotta love the community. Nice to find a UK based floss tuber. Yep, I sure am. Definitely in the UK with the not so great weather. Because <laughs> we don't even know what summer is, especially at the moment. I'm like, is it ever gonna come? You watch, I'll go back to work in September and we'll like have a heat wave or something. Okay, people, I think I've done enough black. What do you reckon? Oh, so there, we've got this little portion of black down here. And I've got these bits to fill in in different colors, but at least I've got a ton of the black done because that was awful. I was like, oh, who wants to sit and stitch black all by theirself? Every time I watch one of your videos, it's like catching up with an old mate and I always end up wishing I was mates with you. Sorry for getting so soppy. <laughs> Coffee, car, fabrics. You can be my friend. <laughs> we can be stitching buddies. <laughs> That's not a problem. Do you know what? I'm going to need this community because I'm, I'm not even a week into being laid up from surgery and I'm already feeling like I'm going stir crazy. So... So yeah, I have a sneaky suspicion there will be a lot more videos and live streams that I'll just randomly pop up because I'm like, I need to talk to people. I just need some fun. Someone needs to make me laugh. Yeah, and that's what you guys are for. So thank you for keeping me extremely busy, keeping me chatting, keeping me smiling, keeping me stitching and with something to talk about because that's the only trouble with doing the stitch with me videos and not doing the live stream. I never know what to say. And unless someone strikes up a conversation or asks a question, sometimes it's like, I don't know what to talk about. What do I say now? So, you know, I can't just turn the music up. I'll just put some music on just while I think of something to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, look, you've all put in some great ideas about um, full coverage places. So tilt and crafts, uh, crafting, cre oh, sorry, charting creations, uh, gecko rouge. See, these are all the things that someone asks you a question. They're just not in my head, but you all know. So that's great. So based on that, I think I'm going to start to wrap up this stream, people. Seems as we've been on for, or I've been on for two hours and 15 minutes. Is it two hours? Five, six, seven, yeah, two hours and 15 minutes. Wow, we can talk, can't we? <laughs> but before I go, I wanted to show you all. Did you all see on Instagram, I got a finish. I have to show you my finish, because it's only right. So you remember Autumn Promise? Let me, oh, let's wiggle you out a bit and move that chart so you don't see that, because otherwise there will be a copyright problem. So this is oh, Awesome Promise. Look what I've finished, people. Where is it? This way around. And trouble is, you probably have to just like look. Look! It's done! I was so excited when I got it done. And the beads, oh my god, the beads. The beads just make it so much better. I am just so in awe of the beads. See, look. Look at the beads. It just changed everything. I was like, oh my god, I love it. 
You gotta love it. I'm so, so happy. Now I just want to take it to a framers, but now I'm really, this is where I'm going to be chatting out for everyone's help because I've never stitched one of these before. And certainly nothing that has like the holes at the back. And this is what I was saying about that you can't afford to have a really messy back on this because you'll be able to see if there's like bits showing from the corners. So this one really needed to have a nice, good back on it so at that point I do worry about what the bag looks like but now it's like how do you frame this because I can't stick it on I can't have the frame and put it on a whiteboard because I want something to pop behind the back of these squares and behind like these specialty stitches don't I like the I mean I've got like the interlay stitch um, the serpentine stitch so they're all like you can see through all of those so yeah, I don't I have no idea what goes at the back of this now to make it all pop and make it look all super duper and pretty. What can I say? What can I say people? Apart from, I love it. Absolutely love it. You know, it's just like, I can see that hanging up somewhere. I haven't quite worked out where it's gonna go yet. But I love it. But now I just need to work out how we finish that. Because it's not like a normal stitching where it's not got any holes at the back. Because it's very holy. <laughs> very holy. What's this? Check out text textured treasures. Oh, oh, I might have to have a look. Textured treasures. I have to write that down. Thank you for the heads up. Hold some behold behind it and see the effects that different colours give. Good plan. Like that one. I do like that. That's a nice idea. Except I would need a lot of board with a lot of different colours to be able to decide on that. <laughs> right. I'm going to call it a day, people. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me and giving me some sanity back because I was starting to think I was going bonkers and stir crazy. So thank you so much. It has been an absolute blast and I appreciate all of you taking the time to pop in, say hi, have some fun, make me laugh. So it's been wonderful. But yeah, time for me to go and... Uh, have a cup of tea, I think. And, uh, yeah, stretch one's legs with me crutches. So, thank you ever so much, everyone. Take good care. Bye.